Ross. I work for the Commonwealth War Graves Commission in Scotland. I'm Regional Operations Coordinator, so I travel about to all the different sites all around the country. Today I'm travelling up to the island of Isla, and this morning I'm starting at Heathrow Airport. I've been down at head office in Maidenhead for a meeting, so heading back up the road. First of all, we've got to fly to Glasgow. Uh, flight's a little bit delayed, but uh, I think we'll be underway soon. That's me arrived in Glasgow now. The weather's a little bit windy and grey. Pretty much the same as I'm in Heathrow. So we're uh, at the airport parking, picking up the works van, and the well, next step is drive to Kenny Craig to the ferry port. All right, see you soon. We've made it safely to Kenny Craig. As you can see, the boat's just docking now, and we'll be on board soon and on our way to the island of Isla. Um, well, I think we'll arrive just in time for bedtime, really, and tomorrow the work starts in earnest at Colholman Military Cemetery. We're getting the site ready for a World War I commemoration, which is on Saturday. This is Colholman Military Cemetery, a final resting place for 74 First World War personnel who were lost on the Otranto on the 6th of October 1918. So we are here getting ready for a commemoration service tomorrow on the 6th of October 2018 to mark 100 years since this disaster uh, happened here just off the coast of Isla at the time in 1918. More than 300 American and British service personnel were buried uh, on Isla. I can show you on a map here where we are. So all the information about the site is on one of these visitor information panels and sometimes you'll see these in a cemetery and it can tell you everything that you need to know and uh, details of how to get even more information as well. That's where we are, Cajon Military Cemetery. There are 12 war grave sites on Isla alone and at this location, Cajon Military Cemetery, there are 74 people buried. 43 of whom still remain unidentified to this day. And there's the graves behind us and across the sacrifice. As you can see, this is a pretty remote location. And there were a lot of challenges involved uh, in maintaining this site. We have a local contractor, Donald, who does a pretty good job. And uh, we also come out from time to time to do some larger renovation projects. One of the good things about our cemeteries is that often there's a bench. And uh, now that the work's finished, they're having a quick seat. Uh, traditional Isle of Weather, a bit of sunshine and a bit of rain at the same time. I'm here with Ian, who's, who's a regional manager for Scotland. So we've been busy, as you've seen, getting everything ready for the ceremony tomorrow. That's the third of a, the ceremonies this year, isn't it? Right. It's the third uh, World War One centenary commemoration on Isle. It's done really well. Yeah. I'm proud of my team who've done a great job. Yeah, we've got um, 12 sites on Isla and 1,300 sites around Scotland where there's at least one war grave. So, um, it's not just us by any means. Uh, we also have a dedicated team of guards and a dedicated team of guys who look after the stones as well. So, we're just two of the Scotland team and hopefully in the future you'll see more of them as well. I'm down at Kilnaughton Military Cemetery now, which is towards the south of Isla. And in the background, around there, you can see there's Port Ellen. And this is the cemetery, Kilnaughton Military Cemetery. of the SS Tuscania, most of the people that were buried in here they were American servicemen and following the war they were repatriated. The bodies were either taken home to the US or to Brookwood Military Cemetery in Surrey. As you can see, there's not very many graves in here. Um, we've got five, six from, six from the SS Tuscania including one private memorial for an American, Private Roy Muncaster, whose family wanted him to remain here where the people of Isla had buried him. In addition, we do have another five graves at the back here, which are from Second World War as well. So it's quite a different feel to this cemetery because of where it is. It's right next to the beach, right next to the water. It's extremely sandy and very difficult to get things to grow partly because of the rabbits. As you can see uh, from the grass there, they have been busy and uh, their a bit of a nightmare. It's 
Saturday morning at Colhoven Military Cemetery. Me and myself have already been over for a wee while, making sure everything looks tip top, and the relatives are starting to arrive. The sun's out. Everything's shaping up for uh, a good day for the ceremony. to the cemetery now, I'm carrying a flag as well, a flag of Portugal. You can see there's flags of different states and cities and other countries across the US and across the world as well. We're back over at Kilhoman after the ceremony. We've been for some lunch and we've heard some great singing. We've had some time with members of the community. And it's been a fantastic time to spend together remembering those who've been lost and also the contribution of the community here in Ireland. Now we're going to close the gate to keep the cows out, head back across the field and back home again tomorrow. We're getting ready to leave Isla now. We're just down to Ferryport and as you can see the weather has turned uh, back to what it usually is. Thanks for joining me here on Isla these past few days. It's time for us to head back to the Scottish mainland. As you can see the weather's turned and uh, we're on board the ferry now just uh, getting loaded up with the last few cars before we go back. Hopefully you'll join me again soon and we'll see some other sites round about Scotland and all the different types of work that we do to maintain the war graves.